Welcome to the Gift Up Podcast. Make sure to hit that like button, share the videos, and subscribe. We're finishing up today with the top 10 quarterback rankings heading into the 2020 season. Looking forward to this. At number one, I have Tom Brady. And this isn't about me kissing Tom Brady's ass. This isn't about me, you know, licking Tom Brady's boots. This is me just giving respect where it's due, okay? The man went to nine Super Bowls, won six of them. He is still getting it done at the highest level in the league, being 43 years old. Everybody that has a problem with Tom Brady either hates him because he wins or hates him because they call him a cheater. Well, guess what? He's neither of those things. A couple little things that happen with deflating the footballs, whatever. All right, so be it. But let's face it, he is the best quarterback in the league. He is the greatest of all time. He hasn't lost his step. And for everybody that says that, is just saying that because he's 43 and never actually watched any game film last year. Because anybody that watched the game film last year would know that Tom Brady bought time in the pocket, just like he always has during his 20-year career, and was able to buy time the fact was is that he didn't have any weapons to throw to. They took away Antonio Brown from him. All he got left was Julian Edelman, Mohamed Sanu, who was hurt, and Enkil Harry, who didn't develop at all last year. That's what he was dealt. And throwing to James White out of the backfield, making little out of nothing. He's still the best in the league until he retires. That will remain as such, or until I put on the film and see his game slipping. Number two, Pat Mahomes. This goes without saying. Look at everything that he's done for the Kansas City Chiefs. And look, I understand that he's got a lot of weapons and people that you have to factor that into it. But what he was able to do last year, hurt in the Super Bowl and pretty much through the playoffs, he had that ankle issue and was able to step up and buy time, make all the necessary throws to lead his team to a victory you got to give Pat Mahomes the credit here. And honestly, that's what I mean about Brady and Mahomes taking over the face of the NFL. When Tom Brady retires, Mahomes, in my opinion, then becomes that next player up. He is the best quarterback in the league. He will become the face of the NFL. I firmly believe that. At number three, Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson just gets better like a fine wine. He really does. It just seems like each year he becomes more accurate, more smarter on the field. He obviously puts in the work off the field as well. He's a quarterback, but just as strong as a running back. He's elusive. And I think the decision-making and accuracy just stand out to me above all else. I mean, we've seen him overachieve with so little sometimes. Look at how DK Metcalf was able to develop last year under Russell Wilson and how that worked and how, because of how accurate Russell Wilson was with the football. Look at the rapport he's building with Tyler Lockett. Those are things that make you a good quarterback. When you make players around you better, that's exactly what Russell Wilson does. He's number three, and he's been moving up my quarterback list each year. He deserves it. At number four, I got Deshaun Watson. And it's just because of, I guess, the mobility is one of the things. But how strong he is in the pocket and elusive is another thing. Because it's one thing to be able to run and escape from the pocket. But Deshaun Watson is able to run and manipulate within the pocket, still stay in, and then be able to deliver a football while not on the run. I think that's the best way I can describe what he does. He buys enough time where he's able to efficiently plant his feet, scan the field, make a play, or he sheds tackles. He's hard to bring down as well. So when you look at the dominance that he brings from making plays out of nothing, I would have to say that's the best thing I can say about Watson and how strong it, it, he is. It's pretty impressive. And that you look at that Bills tape, 
from last season, and you just look at what he did in the uh, overtime in the playoff game. It's just pretty impressive. Uh, you can't coach that. We just got to hope that everybody on that offense stays healthy for him. Will Fuller, especially. Will Fuller is one of the best deep threats in football when he's healthy. And I think Watson has been dealt a bad hand with the injury bug too there. But they did bring in David Johnson. They do have Will Fuller, who is a deep threat. So there are options there for Watson, but they just got to stay healthy. But one of the best quarterbacks in football, and I think people need to recognize that. I don't know where everybody else has Deshaun Watson, but he deserves to be up there. At number five, I got Aaron the Game Rodgers. Sure, we can say that Rodgers' game may have slipped a little bit, or you look at the film in the playoffs last year and you think, damn, he could have done a lot better. Well, with Aaron the Game Rodgers, I actually have an excuse because I think he deserves it that they just don't have enough weapons in Green Bay. First of all, Devontae Adams was hurt last year and played through injury at the end of the season. But he is legit, so when he's healthy, that's great. But they don't have anybody else, and that's the problem. you got to have at least two, three guys to be able to throw to. You have a Hall of Fame quarterback in Aaron Rodgers, but you don't surround him with as many weapons as possible. I still will never be able to figure that out from Green Bay and why they do that. My whole point is is that last year, sure, the offense struggled at times for the Packers, but at the same time, it wasn't because Aaron Rodgers wasn't making the most out of the plays. It was because nobody was helping him out. And I still think he's one of the best in the league, and I wouldn't argue with somebody if they had him in their top three still. Next up at six, I got Carson Wentz. And you want to talk about a quarterback that had to make something out of absolutely nothing last year. It was Carson Wentz. Even worse than what Aaron Rodgers was dealt. Worse than... With with the injuries that happened to the Eagles receiving core... I would say that with the injuries, they became the worst wide receiving core in football. Because Carson Wentz had to try to throw to Nelson Aguilar, J.J. Arcega-Whiteside. And Aguilar is just terrible. Has no self-awareness of where he is on the field. And J.J. Arcega-Whiteside runs like he has cement in his boots. Like he was jogging the routes instead of being speedy and athletic. And, And it was terrible having to watch what Carson Wentz had to go through last year. But yet, I still felt like he put his team in a good position. Even if the play didn't work out, I still felt like he was able to manipulate the pocket, maneuver, buy time, keep his eyes down the field. It's just that there was nowhere for him to go with the football. Literally, everybody was hurt. Alshon hurt. Deshaun Jackson hurt. Zach Ertz was banged up, played through injury. So I just think that we have to recognize that Carson Wentz is a really good quarterback. He just did not get the help last year. I don't want that season to to make people think otherwise of him. He's an extremely talented quarterback who makes exceptional decisions and has everything. Arm strength, mobility, all of that. So we just got to keep a watch. Because if the I go on, I've already been on record saying if the Eagles wide receiving core is healthy. I think that they could be top five passing attack in football. I think they could get that to that plateau. Next up on the list at number seven, I got Matt Stafford. And I think we're going to see the Lions offense take a little bit of a step up this year because they drafted DeAndre Swift, which I think finally gives them some kind of extra weapon to work with, some extra versatility that they haven't had in the recent seasons. You know, certainly... Galladay is there, and he's been getting better. Marvin Jones, of course, has been getting better. But I think DeAndre Swift is going to make this offense somewhat dangerous. Having a running back that can make plays on his own, but also catch out of the backfield, and you already have two legit wide receivers as it stands, I think it's enough for for Stafford to finally get this offense going again. I don't know if it'll be like the Megatron days. Probably not. 
but I think it could get back to being on a dominant level. And I think Matt Stafford has those capabilities. He's got the rocket arm. He's got the pocket presence. He's not afraid to take a shot. You got to give credit where it's due. We can't let the fact that the Lions have been terrible in recent years cloud the fact that Stafford is still one of the better quarterbacks in football. At number eight, I got Drew Brees. I'll probably catch a lot of flack for this, but yes, Drew Brees is 40. No, he's not Tom Brady. Yes, he's lost his arm strength. Those are all facts. Those are all facts. You go put on the Minnesota game in the playoffs last year and you see exactly what I'm talking about. Look how easily Drew Brees missed most of last season because he hit his hand on a helmet. He's 40 years old, man. Not everybody ages gracefully. Not everybody's Tom Brady. And I think a lot of quarterbacks are trying to replicate that because quarterbacks nowadays are taking less punishment than they did back in the 90s and early 2000s. But at the same time, irregardless, when you're 40 and your time's up, that's it. Father time doesn't wait for anybody. Drew Brees is still one of the most accurate Best decision-making quarterbacks in football. That cannot be denied. He is still a top-10 quarterback. But I by no means think he's a top-3 quarterback like some people still have him. Definitely not top-5. It's got to be said. Next up, Matt Ryan here at number 9 for me. And I think when you look at franchise quarterbacks, Matt Ryan fits that mold. I've certainly had a lot of complaints about Matt Ryan myself, but the more and more I look at the Atlanta Falcons... It really comes down to play calling for me. The play calling is absolutely atrocious. Because Matt Ryan, I've seen him make all the throws. I've seen him do it. But there is absolutely no fluidity with that offense. And I don't want to let the fact that the Falcons feel like they owe Dan Quinn a favor to let him keep a job cloud the fact that Matt Ryan is still a top 10 franchise quarterback. He's one of the more elite pocket passers in the league. He gets it done when the we've seen him in Super Bowls. But, you know, we've seen him. I know that Patriot game, that collapse, that was pretty damn bad. But it wasn't his fault. They put up the points. He was able to make the throws. I still think he's that good. And they still have a lot of legit weapons. I just don't know if it's going to get there any better there coach-wise. Dan Quinn's still there, so... I don't really think see how much is going to change for the Falcons. But Matt Ryan is a good quarterback. At number 10, and I think this is where I always say on our list where it can get, you can give or take a name here or there. Uh, the one thing I want to say before I mention my number 10 is that Jared Goff is not a top 10 quarterback. And I am actually disgusted that analysts put Jared Goff and they also put Ryan Tannehill ahead of Tom Brady. That's insane. That's insanity. You guys should have your pages deleted uh, if you say something like that. That's just ludicrousy. That being said, at number 10, I got Josh Allen from the Buffalo Bills. He has gotten better each year he's been in the league. And even as a rookie, he got banged up his rookie year. But I felt with him on the field that the Bills were in almost every game they played. Because of his presence. Because he can run dominantly from the pocket. He's extremely hard to bring down. Has really good speed for this, how big of a dude he is. He has one of... The, I think he has a top three arm. As far as arm strength goes in, in the NFL. I think he's top three. And we've seen his decision making get better. Each of the two years he's been in the league. Now he actually has Stephon Diggs, who's a legit number one, to pair with the other number two receivers that they have. And I think we're going to see him have a really good year and cement himself as a top 10 quarterback. But I think he's already there. And with that being said, I left a couple players off, but I want to mention Lamar Jackson, and no disrespect to him, but... As I've said before on a couple videos, I just want to see him throw from the pocket when the read option isn't working. That's all I'm asking. I don't know why everybody gets so defensive about me making that statement. 
and people throwing stats at me saying that he's great at p passing from the pocket. Well, yeah, he's great at passing from the pocket when he does play action off of the read option, when that's all working, and he has a receiver running wide open off of play action. Yeah, that's nice. But the NFL in the NFL, that doesn't always work. And eventually teams are going to figure that out. They're going to shut that down, and Lamar Jackson is going to throw from the pocket throughout – maybe a whole half of football. Maybe they won't get the, game, or the run game going in a certain game. He's going to have to step up and make plays. Until I see that without the read option, I'm sorry. But he's, he's inaccurate. He's got a, uh, passing accuracy issues. I can't just ignore those things. Kyler Murray, I'm extremely impressed with. Extremely impressed with what I saw from him last year. Now, I saw him throw from the pocket... As much as of a runner as he can be, I've seen I saw him hang in the pocket a lot last year for the Cardinals and deliver that football. I feel pretty confident in saying Kyler Murray is going to be a top fifteen quarterback this year. I feel pretty good about saying that. And then I think we gotta still have Cam Newton on our radars. Because we can't let his time in Carolina fool us towards the end of it here, the last couple years. We can't let that get in the way of the fact that he's still a really good quarterback. And despite what Carolina Panthers fans think, Cam Newton wanted nothing to do with this Carolina Panther offensive line and nothing to do with this Carolina Panther train wreck. He wanted out to go to a place where he can win, and that's exactly what he did in New England. He, he's got to be on everybody's radar. And I think Big Ben Roethlisberger, too. I think he has a chance to get back into that top 15 echelon. I don't think top 10. I don't think that's going to happen for him. We'll see. But I don't think so. But he has a chance to put his name back on the map. And with that, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe.